Uh, tell me how do what's pronounced. So I want to pronounce it correctly. How do we pronounce the the word that's in the name of the dish that you're making? Um, so just ceviche. Um, ceviche. Okay. Ceviche. Yes. <laughs> okay. And well, it's it's so common today, right? Compared to like you know many years ago when I was growing up, that's what we ate. It was common, but uh, yeah. So. Yeah. So now, from what I learned about ceviche, that's really pretty. That that it's popular, makes basically popular amongst Latin Americans that would make it, but they would make it. They weren't making it plant based. They were making it with with raw fish and seafood. And for some people who have adopted this lifestyle and would like something something different to eat than they've been eating, or maybe they grew up eating that and have now given up fish and, and want an alternative. I'm really excited that you're going to be sharing this whole food plant-based version of it, which, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, I love this lifestyle because you learn so much about food and I love to eat. And I learn about mushrooms, different things that can, can kind of have a, a chewy taste in them or uh, for some people who want to still have a meat kind of or a fish kind of taste that they can find things in the plant world that, that mimic that. So like mushrooms and tempeh and tofu. But now you are coming on with another thing that's not any of those that's going to be mimicking the fish. So why don't you talk to us about that? Sure. And by the way, for, you know, I do think that ceviche is more and more common. You see it in a lot of areas now in, in restaurants, Mexican restaurants and other types of restaurants. Um, think of it like a shrimp cocktail where you have the shrimp in so, sort of a liquidy kind of flavorful uh, broth. Well, it's the same way. Today, I'm going to do something a little different. Um, so I started using palm, uh, hearts of palm, and this is, I'm, Kind of just showing you you can find it in whole foods you can find it in sprouts and other places even uh local places like tom thumb I, um, most of your grocery stores will have it kind of hidden in sort sort of like the um uh international aisle of foods and so basically what it is i opened one up and i'm going to kind of pour it out to show you what it looks like and you do need to rinse it of course um and really what i like about this one is that it does remind me amy of so, uh, something, the texture in terms of fish. Some people use, um, you know, back in the day, I would use the tilapia. Sometimes I would add a little bit of shrimp, but it looks like this. And this is really, it comes from the palm tree. So I did a little bit of research to find out if this was sustainable. I don't know if you'd like for me to talk about that right now. Yeah, we will. I, but first, you know what? Yeah. I like to, we have a game that we like to play and it's called true or false. So we're going to do okay. that just to start off and you can kind of gather your ingredients and then I'll ask you to chime in. It's time for true or false on Be Green with Amy live. Answer true or false to Amy's questions in the comments below and Amy will ask our guest for the expert answer. Okay, true or false guys, due to its high content of fiber, hearts of palm help to fight constipation, improving your digestive system. So type in your answer, true or false to that. And Maya, what do you think? I would say, <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, here's another one. True or false, hearts of palms contain potassium, zinc, vitamin C, iron, phosphorus, and more. <laughs> I think that was a pretty easy one. What do you say, Maya? I would say yes. <laughs> Okay, and, and because we're using this as a substitute for fish, I also wanted to kind of raise some awareness about what we find in some fish, which would be mercury and other, other yeah. things too. But true or false, and you guys can type in your answer, a seven ounce portion of, of fish, high in mercury like tuna or swordfish, eaten just once a week, which would be maybe about one and a half cans of tuna a week, can quadruple mercury levels in the blood within a few months. So what do you guys think of that one? True or false? Oh, Jesse T said true. That's right. What do you say, Maya? Oh, I know this to be a fact. Yes. I have my own story about mercury, but yes. Yes. Definitely. And we're, we're looking forward to hearing that as well. Okay, so let's talk about the sustainability also, because I think that that's something that people may have been concerned about. So what do you, what do you yes. want to tell us about that? 
Well, I did a little bit of research and I think it just, it depends on where you're gathering your information. So I was a little concerned because it comes from the palm tree and I thought, well, here we are trying to save, you know, our forests and our trees. Um, and so why would we want to continue to destroy uh, plants and trees? Um, however, so there are two things to this, Amy. My first thing was that I was, I was preparing for a food demo that I'm doing next month in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It is going to be bilingual for the Spanish speaking community. And because I know the ceviche is very popular in the Spanish speaking communities, I wanted to offer an alternative to move people away from fish. So sometimes it's so hard to decide, you know, what do you want to support the animals, the plants, you know, the environment. So what I've learned is that the palm tree itself, this edible portion, the hearts of palm are the young babies of the palm tree. So think of the palm tree being tall, sturdy and mature. And it, you know, it, it propagates, it drops babies, kind of like other plants do where they drop and they're ready to be seed, uh, grown uh, or planted. So these are the babies that kind of drop off the tree that are the most edible. You actually, once a tree becomes a teenager, once it starts to grow, it gets hard and bitter. And like some people say, just like regular teenagers. <laughs> but that's what I've heard. So anyway, um, so that part, you know, that part of the palm tree, most of it is not edible anyway. What you would want are the babies that will fall off the tree. And at any given time, they, three or four could fall off the tree. And then in some areas, they don't just take the hearts of palm to, to produce them for food, they take the rest of it to either contribute to mulch and, uh, and to reuse as other materials. So uh, that's one of the things you can always go into like travel miles. How many miles does your food travel? I mean, it can get complicated. For me, the goal was just to support people that are wanting to move away from fish uh, because that's not only going to help our, our oceans, but it's also going to help your health. Yeah, you're right, Maya, because sometimes we can get into the minutia of things where, and then people will shut down because if they say, well, I just wanted to try plant-based and now I have to worry about this and I have to worry about that, but I can't do that because, you know, and then they shut down and then they wind up just back where they were with eating the animals and what, what did we really do? I think that the more we learn, the more we want to learn and the more we improve, the more we want to, to grow and do more. And yes. I think that maybe people come into this lifestyle maybe for health or they want to lose weight and they're not coming in for sustainability or the planet or the animals. But then later on, they realize, oh, okay, there's other aspects. So I, I, I like the way that you think. Let's just try to get more people in and then they can learn and grow and then become, refine what they're doing. Definitely. It's sort of like we're all at a different level of evolving when it comes to our health and our level of awareness. And so one of the things uh, that we first want to get people to do is just eat more plants. And then once we're on board with that, let's eat cleaner foods. And what I like about this dish, with the exception of the parts of palm that are lightly cooked, is that the, the rest of the ingredients are raw. And as you and I know, Amy, we also want to encourage people to have more raw foods in your diet because those those foods are still very rich um, in nutrients because they haven't been processed or overcooked. Right, exactly. And people who are trying to get things that are less calorie dense, if it's raw, it you you'll bulk up from it and you won't eat as much because it'll fill you up. So I think that's wonderful. And it's really interesting how that okay, this dish was originally made for for fish, but of course, a lot of these fish you wouldn't eat raw. So you want to talk about the components of this recipe that, that make it so that something can taste as if it's been cooked, even though it's raw? Yes. Yeah, so a, any of you that have um, made ceviche at home or probably even use shrimp, like a shrimp cocktail, probably know that the lemon or the lime uh, that you use will cook the fish because most of the time you prepare it raw. So you you imagine this being fish, you dice it up, you cut it to your liking, and then you let it marinate in the fridge with some acid. So you would have a lemon or a lime, depending. And that itself will help it cook. Um, but really, it's the combination of flavors that make the fish flavorful. Fish by itself would not taste as delicious if you didn't add avocado and onion and tomato and lemon. Um, we're going to add a little bit of oregano 
I usually say um, I'm I am SOS like most of us, Amy. But it's just sugar, have... oil, sugar, oil, and salt free. Just yes. to let everybody know. But oh, and also, like... I'm sorry, Maya. I just want to let everybody know the recipe. The link to the recipe is going to be in the in the show notes. So if you want that, just go ahead and you'll be able to find it. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just yeah. want people to know that. Go ahead. And that and that reminds me, I didn't. I printed my recipe and it's somewhere. Um, but I typically, uh, I don't, so I provided you a recipe, but like, you know, I just feel comfortable. I don't always use a recipe. It's just how I, I know I have an idea of how much onion I like in things, how much tomato and all of that. Right. Um, and you yeah, don't have to so, tell us the measurements because if people want the measurements, they'll just go and get the recipe. So don't worry yes. about it. And also what I did is I prepared, um, as we move forward, we can talk about this. For, for people that may not be interested in hearts of palm, I do have an alternative, which is the cauliflower, which many of you probably have heard. And I will be making a cauliflower ceviche because that's what my husband likes. And uh, so I sampled different, I prepared ceviche in many different ways. I've even cooked the cauliflower. Um, enough to tenderize it to make it flavorful or uh yeah tender and i realized that he prefers the raw cauliflower and then this is just another way to get more sulforaphane and and cancer fighting ingredients into our system so i feel like this helps with the daily dozen you know dr gregor's uh daily dozen he always yes. recommends either cauliflower or kale or um, anything cruciferous that we can incorporate on a daily basis so i have this available too wonderful yeah. Right. So <laughs> not everybody can find hearts of palm. So, I mean, most people can have access to find the cauliflower and even if they have to get a bag of frozen. So that's great. That's right. Um, and then also the next thing I'll be trying is with mushrooms. You mentioned mushrooms earlier and I'm still experimenting with that one, but I, mm -hmm. there was a restaurant that just recently closed down in Dallas and they made the most amazing mushroom ceviche. Ah, delicious. So I said, mm. I need to make that one. So <laughs> Yeah, that does sound good. And that's, that's, I think as people learn about this lifestyle and, and get more familiar with the ingredients and cooking, you, you, you start to experiment a little bit and become a little bit more comfortable. So it's nice to have a recipe when you're first starting out and then you can just, and what I love about this lifestyle is, you know, if you were preparing fish, you couldn't taste it while before it was completely broken down by the, by the citrus. You, you know, you couldn't do uh -huh. that but with this. We can just taste as we go and say, hmm, it needs a little more of this. So that's wonderful. Right. I also wanted to show you real quick. Um, so these are some of the ingredients that go in the ceviche. Uh, I have, if you want to show either angle of either camera. So I also sometimes use the little cucumbers. They're like the English um, cucumbers. I like those sometimes in the ceviche. And uh, just like you would in pico de gallo, some people uh, like adding mango. So I have mango here. I would dice it up a little bit smaller. Um, but this is also another alternative. Like if, if you prefer a sweeter ceviche, I don't necessarily always like sweet. So I don't actually put mango in my ceviche, but there are people that do that. So you have many options. I think that what I love most about this is that it's a fresh, I have cilantro as well, but it's a fresh dish today. It happens to be very hot despite the time. This, I mean, we, we fluctuated a lot here in Dallas and we're going to have a hot weekend. So this mm -hmm. is going to be very refreshing because um, it also has cilantro and uh, avocado and all the good stuff. So. Oh, wonderful. That's so exciting. So did you want to, did you want to tell us a little bit? You said you had a, a story to tell us about. So, yes, uh, Amy, you know, many of us have um, some sort of improvement uh, as a result of going plant-based. And for me, it was, uh, it's very interesting because today uh, on my podcast, I'm starting to talk more about environmental toxins. That's kind of like how I started way before the food. I, wanted to eliminate products that could be harmful to my health, household products, personal products. Um, and, and it really started many years ago when I um, became very lethargic. I started gaining weight and I was a person that most of my life was underweight. So I started gaining weight. I felt fatigued a lot. I was cold. Come to find out I have hypothyroidism. 
and uh, didn't understand where it came from. And at the time I was living in San Diego in California and I was doing a lot of research anyway in terms of trying to figure out what was going on with me. And I suspected that because I was mainly pescatarian that I probably had mercury issues. Um, so I happened to have gone to my dentist and I was having a conversation and I, and I told her I wanna have my amalgams that I've had from many, many years ago, amalgam fillings in my teeth. I want to have those removed. And she said, have you ever been tested for mercury? And I said, no. And she said, I think you need to be tested because of what I was telling her that I stopped eating red meat and pork many years ago. I was only eating mainly seafood, uh, a lot of fish. And sure enough, we did a hair, urine and um, blood analysis. And I had mercury poisoning. I mean, oh, I had, mm. whew, Amy, you, I mean, I I worry about Alzheimer's. I, I, yeah. I worry about those things, you know. Right, because, and, I mean, mercury, it's a toxic substance. I mean, it can devastate the nervous system. It can lower intelligence. It can mess with your motor skills. I mean, it can do damage to your heart. I mean, I mean, it could even be fatal. Yes, That's yes. That's scary. So oh. scary. And I learned, I started to learn all of this from listening to uh, talk radio. So, and I love to, I, I want to tell you that because for example, what you do in, in with your podcast, with your show is raising awareness because yes. people are listening. Well, that's how I learned like 15, 20 years. I can't even remember how many years ago I was listening to one of my favorite shows, which was talk radio. And that's how I learned about hypothyroidism. That's how I started learning about adrenal fatigue and all of this. So I went to my endocrinologist uh, and I told him, I think this is what's going on with me. But basically, that's what happened is that I had hypothyroidism. I had um, problems with my adrenals. I mean, I was overweight. I felt awful. And here you were eating fish thinking, look at me. I'm making a healthy choice. Right. Yes. I mean, that's why yeah. you were doing it. Right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I thought I was on the right path. You know, I yeah. veered away from a lot of the animal based products that a traditional Mexican family from Mexico, like my family, how they ate. I moved away from that thinking I was eating healthier and, uh, you know, shrimp tacos and fish tacos and uh, all of this ceviche and other things like that. And, and no, it turned out that, um, you know, I was on the wrong path. And also, I want to throw this in there because I understand now I know the power of plant based foods. So I didn't do the typical chelation. That's very common, which is what you help your body leach out and remove out the um, the mercury from the system. It can it, it, it can take its toll on the body. And to be honest, I was afraid. So I decided to do kind of like sweating it out. You sweat, uh, you know, in a sauna or in a place in California. At, at the time, there were places where you can be zipped in like a, a sleeping bag and they help oh, you sweat. Yeah. Yeah, and then you just kind of remove it off your skin or wipe down. Um, so, but then I learned that foods like cilantro uh, and really just optimizing your immune system helps the body to detox on its own so that you don't have to do anything aggressive. And so that's what I did over the course of time as I had no choice but to move away from fish um, and incorporate more plant-based foods. I, I supported my body the weight started coming off slowly without restricting, without dieting. Now, and, I'm sorry, Maya, were you put on any medication for your thyroid? Oh, my goodness, yes. And that contributed to more weight gain. It was awful. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, so I was on a desiccated uh, thyroid uh, medication along with um, other things to support my adrenals. And in, I would say that in within five weeks, I gained 20 pounds. Wow. And Oh. And my legs, like my face was swollen because I was retaining a lot of water as well. Yeah. So my legs were, uh, felt very heavy and thick. It was incredible. I mean, when you go and I, to be honest, I was wanting to find a photo to share with your listeners, with your audience. Yeah. And they're very hard to find because I was yeah. a, a very dark time in my life when sure. I did not want to be social. I did not want to be photographed because I was embarrassed. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But, it, but it's not so much even I uh, because I never really dealt with weight issues until that health, uh, the health issues that I did uh, develop. So I I'm very I want to be very sensitive when it comes to the topic of being overweight. But I feel that I can understand people who struggle and I felt awful in my own skin. 
-hmm. it was more about my self-esteem dropped. Um, I, I remember there were two years where I couldn't wear the clothes that I owned, but I didn't want to buy clothes because I didn't want to try um, anything on because I felt awful. And then I was new in my relationship with my husband. Oh, so my goodness. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Well, you, you can imagine when he met me, I was like 121 or something, maybe. Uh, and then <laughs> suddenly I'm close to 140. And he was so sweet and he was just like, honey, I think your endocrinologist is over prescribing you. We need to start. Well, let, let me let me clarify with anyone because your husband is a physician. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I don't know if yeah. everybody knows that. So which yes. was fortunate because he kind of he was able to say that he thought you're being over prescribed where if he wasn't a physician, he may not have thought of that. <laughs> you know, you're actually, that is a very good point. I think what it was is that I, I had an endocrinologist in California and then I relocated to Dallas and he decided he wanted to keep me as a customer, I think, or I say customer, but as yeah. a patient. You know um, <laughs> so he just kind of gave, a, gave me more and more medication and then the weight just uh, it piled on and I, it was just awful. I was sleeping a lot. I'm not a person that can nap today, but in that time when I had hypothyroidism, I found myself sleeping during the day. And I remember I would visit my family. My, my family lives in Arizona and I remember being young and sleeping a lot. Uh -huh. And it's just so awkward um, that I went through that phase of being so tired. And here I am 50 years old and I don't even nap during the day. <laughs> I probably should, but... <laughs> Right, but, um, but but you don't feel that need to, and you're not right. You're not feeling sluggish like you were. That's right. And so I wanted to add to your point. That's a very good point. My my husband's a vascular surgeon, so he sees the majority of his patients have advanced disease, advanced atherosclerosis. So he sees all these extreme cases, and uh, he said, "I'm going to monitor you." as we slowly take you off the medication. And we did that. We did that over the course of about a year, maybe a year and a half, because um, it could be hard on the body to come off some of those things. And so that's what I did. And so, but at the same time, I was transitioning to whole food, to being whole plant-based foods. So uh, I, I feel like the food started supporting the changes that I was undergoing with my body. And so, yeah, I've, uh, I, I, it's amazing. I just don't, I don't even know how to explain how amazing it is that many years ago, I looked into supplements and, and I consider the products in my home. I consider the lifestyle I led. And the last thing that I actually considered was food. It's awkward. Yeah. Isn't that, well, I mean, that's what yeah. we're, we're not told by our physicians and, and even, you know, back then you would search on the internet, you now will come across your podcast and my my broadcast and others and maybe there's more of a chance which is why we're doing this right we want to yes. put more information out there so that there's more of a chance that when somebody has something similar to you or something else that they might yes. happen upon this and and we'll have that ripple effect and and hopefully help somebody out there which is that's right you know that's why we're doing it oh wow what a story Oh, I want to add one last thing uh, in terms of my uh, blood work, because um, right before 20, uh, well, it must have been early 2020 when I went to my physician. I really don't go to a physician, but my husband insisted, you got to go to the doctor. So I said, OK, I'll, I'll establish myself. So I had all my labs drawn and I specifically asked to be tested for mercury because I had not been tested since that whole transition over the course of a few years. And so that, I was going to ask you about how long did you think that was? Uh, from, well, the, uh, I was since saying, the other test, I guess, since the test, the first test. Well, two, 2009, maybe okay. 2010. Um, yeah. But years. Yeah. I had been feeling cold and sick. I had symptoms years before that. So who knows yeah. how long I was actually doing because you, it's like what you said earlier in, in your quiz, in your test. Yeah. Your little quiz is that, um, you know, the body, it, when you support it, the body detoxes, but if you keep piling and piling and piling things on top of it, it's harder. You got to support the liver. You got to support your immune system so that 
we can continue to detox the things that we take in every day that are not good for us. So, but yes, I asked my doctor to specifically focus on mercury as well. I told him that I was very afraid that yes. because I've heard mercury can be, you know, not only can it cross a blood brain barrier, <clears throat> but it can also um, hide sort of in, in the fat tissue. Yes. And uh, so he called me and he said, no trace whatsoever that you ever had mercury. And I said, really? Like you, you were prepared really... to have like a lower level and be and celebrate with that, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, I was. And to tell you the truth, I'm still a little afraid. And uh and I had my blood work done last year again and no trace of mercury, oh. but it's that awful fear because you hear that you know how it can contribute to Alzheimer's disease, and of course, like you said, the nervous system, nervous problem, um, yeah, affecting the nervous system. Uh, so I'm very thankful, very, very thankful. Um, that's how I know I'll never go back to fish ever again, because, you know, when you think about it, there is no way for us to really know where our fish comes from. Um, and I remember enjoying sushi. I would go to sushi bars back in the day. Um, and it's not like we know where these, where the fish comes from. If they come from like these fish farms or, and they, and fish absorb everything in their surrounding. They're like a sponge. Yes, exactly. And they, I mean, people think, oh, I'll have wild caught salmon. Technically, you can have a fish farm and have, and they have different tanks that they have set up in, in the water, separating the different fish. And all they have to do is lift up one of the dividers and let those fish swim like 50 feet or 20 feet and then harvest them. Well, now they're fresh caught. So <laughs> that's true. So you really don't, like you said, Maya, you don't know what you're getting. So just, just check yeah. out this recipe. You don't need it <laughs> because you're going <laughs> to, you're going to have delicious food yeah. and, and be so much healthier be, because of it. That's right. Yes. Very happy about that. So should we get started? Sure. Okay. So I, I have my little, so I made a video on my Instagram and I, there's, I'm not promoting this cutting board. I just use it all the time. Now I picked up this bamboo uh, cutting board on Amazon and it's become like my favorite board because it helps to eliminate a lot of use of other dishes and making a mess and things like that. It has like okay. four compartments. Can you lift it up and let's, let's see what it oh, looks yeah. like. So before right. you put things on it, cause I, I love I love innovation. <laughs> oh, it's very, so, it's very thick. Okay. It's bulky. <gasps> oh uh, it has gosh. four compartments, right? And um, it comes with a couple other things that I can grab for you. But uh -huh. uh, what I learned about bamboo is that it's easy on the knife. So first of all, bamboo is less likely to be scratched, but also most cutting boards can hurt your knife. Yes. Uh, depending on oh, how aggressive you are. Yeah. Yeah, so the bamboo is very good. It also comes with just one little top here. Um, uh -huh. I don't know which camera you're using. If I'll, you wanted to I'll just put both board, cameras on and then if we can there see. There you go. And then I'll show you uh, the other things that it comes with. Uh -huh. but right now I only have three right here, but it comes with four plastic um, uh -huh. liners or, yeah. that you can use if you only wanted to cut this way. See, my and husband loves those liners. <laughs> <laughs> I have a wooden cutting board and I'm always cutting on the wood and he's always grabbing one of those liners. He loves them because you just pick them up and you can kind of bend them and, and, you know, put, put things in. Yeah. He's always, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I, we're always replacing them because after a while, of course, you know, when you cook a lot at home, you're going yes. to go through a lot of them and, and after a while you need to replace them. And, and, and you can pick your favorite color because you don't have to worry about cross-contamination. That's what I was going to say. I love it. I, I mainly have been using the green one because the green one has like a vegetable. But uh -huh. I left and I was like, yeah, right. Like I'm going to use all of these. You're right. I don't have to worry about cross-contamination. And then it comes like with these little graters that I, oh. I thought was pretty cool too. Because I, I actually thought like. Can you um, hold that up to the camera a little bit? And then yes. we'll just check it out. So if you sure. want to slice cucumbers or tomatoes, actually one of them I need to rinse better <laughs> because I've been using them. But uh, what would be a cheese grater that we can use to grate anything else? Um, and the smaller one too, you can use to zest, right? Yeah. It, it's kind of like an all-in-one kind of a setup here. Like yeah. it, um, 
I like the idea of traveling with this in the van because uh, I don't have a lot. I, we try to preserve water when we're traveling in a camper van. You mm -hmm. just don't have access to a lot of water. And so these go in here. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. So if yeah, you hold, hold that up again to the camera. I have to see it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a compartment. So these slide into what is a little gap here. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So they, a they recessed, uh, yeah. go in like that. Oh my gosh. And oh. so then I make salads it? every, you know, well, I, I make them every like four days because I batch pre prep my salads and uh -huh. ooh, this is, looks like fun. <laughs> and, then, and then when your items are done, they're here. So what I love about this, Amy, and my husband cooks too. So, but uh -huh. I'm the main cook here, but I do have my, my salad station with my vinegars yeah. and all the other things in one area. And this is right next to that, like what I consider the salad station. And so I prep all the ingredients and then my husband just eat. And it just makes it so much easier for him to come home and just put everything together. And um, what, what else was I going to show you? Oh, just one other thing about this is that they do stack up. So say that this is pretty full and you have lettuce or tomatoes or anything like that. You can store them in the fridge. Wow. Like so the ingredients are ready to go. And by the way, I have some things in these that I need to chop up. And, but uh, I can go on and on about all of this. I know. We could have done a whole show just on your really cool. Um... Oh, wow. That is so So this cool. one, I, I went ahead and diced my red onion that I'm going to use. And I like the smaller option. You probably have this one too as well. Amy, the Vidal. Oh, oh yeah. It is. I have. I don't have that brand, but I have something similar to it that it goes. Yes. It does. It does other things too. But yes. Oh, I love that. Right. So I feel that I am very much into kitchen gadgets. And yes. when my husband's speaking with people, he's like, "Oh, we have a ton of cutting boards. You should see how many cutting boards we have." And to me, it's a tool. I'm sorry, but it's not just a cutting board. It's a tool. It, absolutely. And you don't eat out as much. So, I mean, the money that you would be saving to, from, from going out to restaurants that a lot of people do, I mean, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you've got that extra money yes. to spend. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so anyway, so what I would do, uh, if you want me, I can go ahead and get started yeah, sure. with the hearts of palm. Uh, I think my recipe calls for eight of these, but I, since we are going tomorrow night, uh, we're going to be traveling in our camper van. I'm going to go ahead and cook all to prepare all of this. And what you would do is, uh, you could mash this up depending on the consistency or the tenderness or however you want, whatever works for you. Um, or you can dice them. Some people say you can dice them as if they were um, scallops like this, uh -huh. right? I'm going to go ahead and kind of just ch roughly chop them up because the more you handle them, the more that the, the hearts kind of fall apart anyway. So mm -hmm. this is what I'm going to do. And just kind of roughly, I kind of roughly dice them that way. And then I'm just going to go like this. Or you can mash them with a mash masher for potatoes. Mm -hmm. And like I said, this could be, you can do it any way that you want. But what I love about my chopping board here, my cutting board, is that I could just move my ingredients easily into its little compartment there. Oh, that's just yeah. such a, oh. you feel like you're in a professional kitchen, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, you know. I think because we that's what takes the, that takes the extra time because you're like okay now I have to put the knife down and and yes, I actually have yes. one of those things that you you can scoop up a lot of things with oh, I don't yes. know what it's called it kind of looks like a, a like a, a rectangle or... yeah and I and I put the knife down and I scoop it up and I don't always get it on the first shot and I'm and then they have to pick up the knife again and so and here we go we're just taking less time out that's wonderful. Right. Well, for me, this works like in the van, for example. Um, I don't know. People can travel with this if they wanted to. But yeah. uh, when you have the van, well, when you have certain places where you don't have a lot of counter space, this helps you a lot. Yeah. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so you prepare your um, 
have you ever had ceviche, Amy? I have not. That's why I didn't know how to pronounce it. Oh. <laughs> but I'm you going can. to. Yeah. I'm going I'm, to very soon. <laughs> I would think because I'm in Florida, right? I guess it depends on where you're at. But I feel like yeah. it's so common. A lot, you know, a, a dish that you would find somewhere in one of the coastal right. restaurants. So. And it and it may be. I mean. I have, I've been plant-based since 2012, so it's been a while since I've, I've gone to look at that part of the menu if I went out, but right. yeah. yeah. So here we are, uh, I have my ingredients. So say if I did want to prep ahead of time, I could just put the lid, put it in the fridge, allow it to chill, and then I would move on to my next ingredient. So that's what I have so far, and I'm actually- And you have more than one of those trays though, right? Yes, so I'll show you so the you, other one. If you wanted to make separate ingredients cut up, you could just keep cutting, and if that got full, you could take another yeah. tray out, right? Yes. And, yeah. It, and I just kind of give this a, a, a nice wipe. And what uh -huh. I do also, depending on the ingredients that I'm using, is I use one of the the clean ones. Right here, right here I have jalapenos because that's what I'm going to be cutting next. But sometimes I use the tray to catch all the scraps, all the things that I'm going to get rid of. Like for example, yes. I'm going to deceive the uh, the jalapenos so I could just throw the seeds in here. I'm also gonna remove some of the seeds from the tomato uh, just because that's how my husband likes them. Yeah, it's a thing that's, that his, that's great. Yeah. Some people even yeah. like the compost. And oh, that's right, they yes. Make a Perfect. separate tray just for oh. the composter too. Yes. So say right here, see, I'll just go ahead and dump it. I used to use a bowl. Uh, you probably do the same thing. Use the yes. bowl on the side. Yeah, the scrap bowl. Um, yes. Oh, and my then, goodness. This is like a game changer. Wow. <laughs> and you see some of these gadgets, and you wish somebody would just show you if it really works and how, you know, right. if it's worthwhile to have. But it looks yeah. like it is. And I'm assuming that if you're right hand, uh, left-handed, there's probably a, the another the the one that would move the other way yeah i don't know if if people that are left-handed yeah but i guess people who are left-handed have had to learn to deal with a lot uh, i guess <laughs> so if they didn't have it they would be like oh it's still so cool right. <laughs> so i remove the seeds but if you like spicy you know i, I yeah. sometimes depending i'll add the seeds back i mean i want to enjoy my food i don't want to suffer so <laughs> yes exactly um but anyway, that's what I'm doing right now is I'm removing the seeds. And for those and, of us um, who have never handled a jalapeno or cut it, what what do you want to warn us about? Well, okay, I am handling my jalapenos with um, without gloves. Yes. Uh, so you're an probably, expert, but we're not all experts, and so we, we need to be warned. <laughs> it's amazing. You're right. I wear contacts, so this evening I will be touching my eyes. <laughs> and so... No. Uh, but I think I, I don't know why I'm not as affected anymore, but I would, you know, so you have these gloves that you can, ha um, uh, disposable gloves if you want to use. Uh, as a matter of fact, my husband's mom, uh, she they're Pakistani and she uses a lot of jalapeno and, and spicy, uh, you know, peppers and things like that. And she was the one that kind of taught me to use gloves, especially when you're going in there and you're removing the veins and the, the seeds. Because if you touch yourself, your mouth, your nose, or your eyes, you will be in pain. So right. you definitely want to be considerate of that. I should probably um, add that to the recipe instructions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's add it. I think sometimes we don't know, we forget. Yeah, um, you just, yeah, yeah yes. exactly. So I'm going to, uh, so my uh, Vidalia could be used again, like I could use this to go ahead and, and chop up all the jalapenos, you know, just like I did. Yeah. Uh, you know, my onion. However, I'm just going to do these real quick. I, I, I don't think it'll take too long. But um, And you can make them small. Everyone's different. I like the jalapeno to be small. Smaller than, say, maybe about the size that I, I dice the, the, what do you call it, the onion. Mm -hmm. um, but the Vidalia would help you to do this just as well. And so here we are. And I'm probably just going to start combining everything into one of these containers because that way I can just easily mix things. Uh, you can use serrano peppers. It really depends on um, what you can handle. If it's too spicy, 
do whatever, you know, or some people add bell peppers, you know, the little peppers. Yeah. Uh, the smaller peppers that are red and yellow. You can add those to the ceviche. I have my favorites and I, I prefer not to add those. Um, but again, you know, it depends to, if you like things to be sweeter, you could add the mango, you can add the, the bell peppers. Yeah. And so, but this one was my favorite, by the way, uh, Amy, uh, Hearts of Palm. Yeah. It was my favorite out of all the ones that I've been making. I liked uh, cooked cauliflower. Like I said, my husband likes the raw cauliflower. And let me know how much time I have if I if I need to move faster. Yeah, we're, no, we're good. I think we're okay. good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If we're not, having fun. And that's what it's about, right? You just got to have fun. Can't be serious all the time. I love your show, Amy. I love your energy. And I said that to you before. I think uh, it's much needed. This is what it's all about, having fun. And I, it's also what I miss. Um, before I went vegan, plant-based, I, I enjoyed having get-togethers in my house. Um, and it, I was single at the time. I, I don't do that anymore because when my husband and I became plant-based, our world changed a little bit and we don't have a big enough space to invite people. But I have always enjoyed having people come over and cook with me. And so here are my jalapenos. Very nice. Okay. So I'm just going to keep this here and I'm going to move on to three different... Uh, I was going to make more tomato, but I can do that later for my husband, ceviche. And I'm going to switch my tray only because I want to uh, deceive the tomatoes. You don't have to remove the seeds. As a matter of fact, I like the whole tomato. Uh, but my husband, he, he does that. He removes the seeds. And I said, okay. His mother does too. So. Oh, that's why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it depends on the dishes too. That's the way. Like but, you know, it, it's... Some people, it, they say, oh, I don't like this particular fruit or vegetable, but sometimes that's not what it is. Sometimes it's just a texture, not a taste. Yes. And for so for some people, they may not like the way the texture or the mouthfeel of those seeds from mm -hmm. a tomato. And maybe that's right. the only reason why they don't like tomatoes. Yes. Or and maybe they don't. Go ahead. Yeah, no, it's interesting that our taste buds do change and we become more open to more of certain kinds of vegetables that perhaps we would have never eaten. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm yeah, we got both thing. cameras, so I'll just try to figure out the best view. <laughs> yeah, so here we are. You can see I okay, the, very nice. The seeds you don't have to. Also, like I said, you can add as much or as little as you want of every of each of the ingredients. Um, but like I said, we are headed out to camp tomorrow. So I'm going to have this, <laughs> some of this leftover for tomorrow, hopefully. And take and, the um, cutting board. <laughs> there you go. Yes, because I still have to figure out what I'm going to do for lunch and dinner. Well, yeah. this would be like a, a lunch. Um, but I love the cutting board and it is a little bulky. So I do have an area where I can store it. But if it makes things easier and I'm using less water, because yes. I think a lot of times we're were you're rinsing you're constantly you're rinsing you're yes. storing um okay let me switch this over so this is again where i have sort of like my scraps yes. or if you if you compost you can use those and i'm just going to start putting everything in here and i'm almost done so i have uh the last thing would be my avocado put a little bit of uh tomato and not tomato the um the uh, lime and i needed to sharpen my knife I think as vegan, as plant-based people, we have to sharpen all the time. Yeah, uh, it's so true. <laughs> because and, and sometimes it takes that you wind up using somebody else's knife in their kitchen or or you on vacation and you wind up with a knife in, in some place and, and it's sharp and you go, Oh my goodness. My <laughs> knife is dull. So how do you sharpen your knives? I have uh what are the the honer? The yes, honer? yes, uh -huh. yes. I also have the well I I did. Um, I haven't completed my uh, Ruby culinary course. Did you do that one? I don't remember. If you no, did. but it sounds like fun. Oh, is that a plant-based course? They have a plant, a fully plant-based professional certificate from Ruby. Uh, it's a, a detailed, I think, six-month course. And uh, at the time, I was traveling a lot, so I wasn't able. And now I have the yeah. podcast, but you can complete the course, of course. They, it, it entails basic knife skills. So you learn basic knife yes. skills and sharpening skills and uh, safety 
issue, you know, safety yeah. procedures or when you're cutting. And uh, but yeah, I could tell my knife needed to be sharpened, and I use it all the time. But I have caught my husband; he does this sometimes. Uh, you gotta give and him. Like, Say, I'm giving you a kitchen ticket. <laughs> I should tell him that. Don't tell him I. I said so. <laughs> you can print them out and say, "Excuse me, sir." <laughs> right. So what uh, I'm going to do real quick, the last thing is to put the the uh, squeeze some lemon into this, and then the avocado. And so let me just kind of clean my board, and we're, I'm going to try to move a little faster, just in case we run it. I don't want to run out of time. Where is my other part here? Um, so yeah, so I, that's how I learned about cutting. I would recommend anybody take the class. It's so much fun. And before the pandemic, your final, final assignment was to throw a party. Oh. And yes. And all the items that you have to present, whether it's a soup or an appetizer yeah. or dessert are all in these beautiful, you have to be very creative, yeah. um, to score points in that department. And so, um, I was looking forward to throwing a party and inviting people over yeah. and saying, look well, at what I learned in my culinary It'll career. happen. But you know what I love about this recipe that you're doing? You haven't been jumping all over the place. You, you, I mean, like if you had a small kitchen, okay. you, you're just basically right there, right? Just yes. creating everything is just right there and you're not jumping all around and needing a, a lot of workspace. And, and here it yes. is. It's getting all thrown together. Yes. And I've learned, um, I, I've never taken professional courses other than the Ruby Culinary, but uh, in other words, I, I'm not a professional cook or anything. But um, the more that you, you prep and the more time you spend in the kitchen, I realize the less stress I have. Yes. And, and the easier it becomes not to necessarily rely on recipes um, because sometimes I can also kind of hold this back when we, and I was learning this, uh, Amy, when we were thinking about sustainability too, is that when we're waiting for that one ingredient to make the dish, mm. that could actually cause a lot of your food to go bad because they're, it's just sitting in the fridge waiting for that one ingredient that you need to go to the grocery store for. And so what I've learned to do is when I'm making one dish and I have leftover anything like tomatoes or onion, I make, and then if I have an avocado, I'll make guacamole or I'll put things together and I'll make a, um, a um, what is that called? It's the Mexican salsa, pico de gallo. Yeah, the, my husband likes to gallo. call it pinko. I don't really know why. <laughs> he, he says, we need some more pinko. And I'm like, oh, you mean pico? <laughs> and so it's a little running joke with us, which is re really great. And, and worse comes to worse, if the vegetables are, or even the fruits, if they're going bad, you can roast them on parchment paper and put some balsamic yes. vinegar. Or if you like yes. smoothies, they can just go in the blender and, or you can just make them into a soup. So yeah. there's really no excuse to, to worry about things going bad or not. Like you said, not having the right ingredient, just take what you have and you'll be surprised because I think, would you, you say that for the most part, it's all in the sauce? Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Right. Yes. If you can learn. And, and, and that's one of the things that I learned in Ruby. If you can learn basic sauces and dressings, you can eat anything. Yeah. You can flavor anything. So this is what things look like so far. I combined. I basically put onion, tomato, jalapeno. Maybe you can hold it up close to the camera. Okay. Hang this on. This one or the other? You're, you're, you're good. Just let's do it. Okay. okay smile. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. <laughs> Just in case you want to do a screenshot. <laughs> Thank you. Here's another one. Oh no, okay. I love it. You think of the thumbnails and stuff. I love yes, it. Yes, you have oh, to. It's like, this is when on my own, believe it or not, I, I if you and I ever cook in person, we would have yeah. so much fun. Because I oh, am a lot we? more fun in person. But we would. But and especially because I'm not really a cook. I I have a series on my YouTube channel called Hey. I can make that because, because I, I, that. I just need simple ingredients. <laughs> I don't have the patience that requires to sit and, and watch something and not let it burn or whatever. So, so, but I could learn so much from you and, and we could just Aww, have fun. Thank you. <laughs> but, you know, this is when I would 
take photos for Instagram. The, yeah. I would be photographing along the way just because the colors are so beautiful. And you, you see that I'm not really measuring only because I kind of have an idea. But like I said, you have the recipe. Yeah, so, the recipe is going to be available in the show notes. It's going to have all the ingredients yeah. with the measurements if you guys want to play it safe right. and not live life on the edge like Maya. <laughs> 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 so I sprinkled some oregano and I put some lemon in here. And then the final thing is just putting in some diced uh, avocado. You don't have to put avocado. Oh, I forgot one other ingredient that's sitting in one of my compartments and it's the cilantro. <laughs> ah, see, we have to take advantage of, with the oregano, with the cilantro. We need yes. as many greens as we can get. And people don't that's think right. that these, this is opportunity to put yes. greens. And every time you make something, just say, can I add some kind of green to this? Even if it's oregano, can I add something yes. to this that I'll get some more leafy green in there? Yes. So I've said that um, that might be too much cilantro that I want. I, I was rinsing it earlier. Let's see if that, that'll work. So it's a shame that my husband is one of the few people that tastes the cilantro as if it tasted like soap. Yeah. So he has that reaction. Um, so anywhere we go, he has to make sure that we do not add cilantro. And I have to make sure I don't add cilantro to his food. Yeah. But it's one of the my favorite foods is what I grew up with, or one of my favorite herbs. But also, like I said, when I learned that... Um, Cilantro can help you detox. Mm -hmm. You know, it helps support the body. And it's just so good for us, helps alkalize the body. So many great benefits. So I'm chopping it how roughly you can chop it to whatever size you like. I kind of like it not too, too rough. So I'm just going to toss it in here directly because I had forgotten to add it in there. And so now I have all of my ingredients except for, whew, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Yeah, that's a, those fresh uh, herbs can do that. <laughs> so, but I enjoy all of this. And um, and so I haven't made this for my family, but I'm going to, um, travels are in the future for family graduations. And so um, I already have my idea. We of need another, after you mix that up, we need another picture. Okay. So, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I didn't the, the avocado. Okay. Um, but uh, I kind of like it the way that it looks more like little um, scallops. Some mm -hmm. of the pieces are like scallops. You can cube them, you know, make them however you like. Uh, it's really according to whatever you're here. We are. How's that? Naya. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Okay. So real quick, because I, I have no idea what time. Oh, don't worry about um, oh, We're time. almost there. Okay. So the other thing that I learned... Um, through Ruby, and again, um, I think m many of your listeners learn a lot from you anyway, but taste your food as you go when you're mixing ingredients. I'm, I'm, I watched the, another show that talks about how the odor of how you add your ingredients can affect the flavors of the dish. Like if you put this on top of that first wow, or the layering, other way around. Yeah. Yes. And so that's what I would recommend is I'm always um, saying to my husband, did you taste it? Because we cook together. So did you taste it? What does it taste like? That way, you know, you know, what's what you like, how much to add of certain things. And so um, I usually release this in the sink. Can you and give us a tip on, on picking avocados? Because you know that, that they have those little funny memes going around where I'm not ripe enough. I'm ripe. And then you're about to eat it and you're like, oh, too late. <laughs> That's a good one, Amy. I struggle so much right now. I'm struggling uh, with avocados. And I said to, uh, I forgot who I was talking to that I asked, is it me or am, are the avocados coming out like not so fresh anymore? Um, I don't know. My experience has been when I lived in California, of course, you know, yeah. I had the best avocados all the time when I lived in California. I, and I'm now in Dallas and it doesn't matter what grocery store I go to. I still have a hard time finding avocados because they're either very under, right? You know, not, yeah. I mean, you need to wait days for the avocados to be ready. And then you have uh, most of them, like the Haas avocados, like this, these are the Haas. They, um, are too overripe, like yeah. 
Is that how you say it? Like I was too right. I would say it. I don't know. I didn't go to culinary school, but <laughs> maybe maybe that's not in the vocabulary. You don't think you're so right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just gonna throw that in there like that. And again, add as much avocado as you want. I know that if people are are you know focusing on their weight, yes. that they try to minimize the use of avocados. Um, and, you know, I was recently following, uh, when I was trying to lower my cholesterol, Amy, I got on the seven day rescue plan mm -hmm. by, um, Rip Esselstyn. Yeah. And he, he says, if you're going to have avocado only have like half, yeah. uh, save the rest because it can be an issue for some people who struggle with weight. So that's where I stand with avocados. We know they're nutritious, but you don't want to overdo it either. So what do you think about avocados, Amy? I, I think that they they find my hips very easily. So, I, but I do use them. I do yeah. I do use them, but I just don't I don't overdo it. But I right. but I do incorporate nuts and seeds, but I don't eat them <sighs> with snacks. I only eat them with my meals so that they can help. Because when you add those healthy fats, it does help to absorb the nutrients. Yes. So I do that, but I'm but I'm very careful with how many you know, I, yes. I use, so I just, I use them sparingly, but I always have some in my diet. I think that, that it's important, but not, you know, and there we talk about the minutia. You just have to find what works for you and don't worry so much about these things, especially if you're first starting off and then you'll yeah. find what works best. I think everybody's body's different. Some people can eat an avocado and, and they don't experience any weight gain and other people will look at it and, and they gain weight. So you just have to figure it out, you know, what works mm. best for you. This is so good. I had to do a taste test. Yes, because that's what you say. It's always important to taste just in case you may need. And is this the kind of thing that maybe tomorrow it might have? Okay, smile. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And is this the kind of thing that maybe tomorrow it may taste a little different? Like the next tomorrow, day kind of thing? If there's tomorrow, any left. <laughs> yes, exactly. If there's any left. Don't go over 24 hours. I At least I've tried. Well, uh -huh. you know what? I mean, I did do the cauliflower cooked and uncooked and the ca cooked cauliflower did very well. I think the lemon mm -hmm. helps to preserve the avocado and all the rest of the ingredients, but I don't like to eat something this fresh two days later okay. because then it just is not as fresh. Okay. Um, and then finally, what I would do, and you don't have to do this. So I have this cute little bowl. So if you wanted to serve it at a gathering in, in something that is a little more traditional, you put it in something like this. I say traditional, but um, kind of uh, cultural, if you want yeah. to kind of have it at like, oh, how cute Mayo yesterday, that. right? Yeah. Look at that cute bowl. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then... Um, the way that I was used to eating ceviche was on a tostada. And this is also very difficult. I'm not saying I recommend this brand, but these are baked tostadas. You can bake uh -huh. your own um, tortilla. Amy, it wasn't until I became plant-based that I, I, I really didn't know that tortillas have can have um, oil. Mm -hmm. until one of my friends told me and I suddenly I find myself at Whole Foods looking at packages looking uh, but at I the found... ingredients because for some people oh, yeah. with, who are like us we're SOS free some people are avoiding sugar oil and salt the oil I mean a, a tablespoon of oil has over 120 calories and it's hidden in things like these tortillas and so forth and if you're looking to lose weight or you're looking to resolve some health conditions eliminating oil may be something that you want to do. I'm going to add that camera back. Go ahead, show it. You can show it to both cameras and this way we can see maybe up higher. Hi. There, there you go. go. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh boy. So I'd like to, so these are baked tortillas, but I like to put them in and I didn't do it this time, but just put them in the toaster oven or in your oven just a little bit longer to get them a little more crisp. And now um, I'm going to do a taste test. for you Okay. Guys. With the microphone, we got to hear the crunch. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, wow. Mm, ASMR. No? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, one more bite. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Oh, gosh. Mm. That looks great. 
Oh my goodness. And, and that, yeah. I love this lifestyle because you could eat as much of that as you want till comfortably full and you wouldn't have to worry ab about, you know, gaining weight if that was something that you were concerned about because it, mm -hmm. and it's just so healthy and it's got the cilantro if you're trying to detox. Wow. Yes. And, and so this is pretty. also like, you know how we think about getting together and I will be gathering with family together in um i started traveling next week and one of my sisters because i'm going to her daughter's college graduation and my sister said well what are you going to eat and uh -huh. uh, we're going to go to this particular restaurant is there anything you can eat and then i said don't worry we're going in our camper van i will have food yes. <laughs> so no excuse uh she said that the restaurant does not allow outside food but i, I don't really know about that because amy i've gone into certain restaurants yeah. with my own food um, so I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that. that it might be that because the outside food they're talking about is when people have like a, a, a package from another restaurant that shows the name of it or, you know what I mean? Ah, yes. I mean, I've gone with, I have zip lock bags that have cooked beans in them and I've gone into a restaurant and ordered a, a really big salad and there's no way I'm going to be satisfied with just the salad. I'll still be hungry mm -hmm. and I just take it out of my cooler in my purse and I open up the beans and pour it in the salad. So I'm still a paying customer, but I just, you know, I need something to sustain me. So yes. yeah, I don't, I don't think yeah. it's not like you're going to have this big production, right? No. Of food, and they yeah. happen to have chosen a steakhouse for dinner for the, after the graduation dinner. Okay. And as you know, they have steamed vegetables. <laughs> so I probably will take potato or like brown rice on the side, something to, um, to so that my food is uh, fulfilling. And yeah. then I probably will take my own dressing and still order their salad. So it becomes easier the more that you eat this way. Um, yeah, and it doesn't have all around the family. So this is something that you can make. Uh, especially now that we're going into the summer, you can make it, take it to a potluck, invite people over. This is an appetizer. It's not really a main meal, but it can be, I guess. Um, oh, I think it could be a main meal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> especially so with that I, crunch. I mean, no, yeah. I <laughs> I'm not going to make this today, but after we get off, I'm going to prepare half of this. I'm going to make uh, for my husband and you'll see that I'll use the same ingredients and uh, keep it in the fridge for about two hours so that the flavors can marry. And it'll be delicious. Okay, that's that, that's good yeah, advice. So. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. Oh my goodness, how nice is that? And then your husband's going to get to enjoy the one without the cilantro, and it's going to be a going to be a good thing. Well, yes. we yeah. I'm going to we had some questions, but I'm just going to put up one because I want to make sure at least one person gets their uh, question in. So okay, so Angie wants to know what did you eat when you first began this lifestyle. So I know that you, let's just say after you eliminated the fish, right? So, yes. yeah. yeah. So that's a tricky one, uh, but I'm going to answer it. When I first made the transition, I, law, I, I learned about the raw vegan diet, the raw till four. I, okay. You're probably familiar with me. Yeah. So I ate a lot of papaya. Like I would start off the day with papaya and bananas, all sorts of fruit till four. Mm -hmm. And then I would have like a salad or something plant-based. Um, but once I kind of figured out like what worked for me, then for me, it became like the oatmeal in the morning, like a lot of beans and rice and potatoes and, you know, what people say are bad for you, but are, you know, that are rich in carbohydrates. Sweet potatoes are, are some of my favorites, uh, lentils. So any combination of that, it can be roasted potatoes with some lentils or, or and even roasted chickpeas to making soups that are um, rich in chickpeas, for example. So it's just a combination of dishes now. Yeah. Wow. See, and then and then you just go from there and you learn new recipes and you make things up. And the longer that you do it, the the, the easier it gets. And you can just start off with simple things. And there's yes. Maya has a lot of recipes to share. I have recipes on my Be Green with Amy website. So there's a lot of a lot of free information out there. So you really can Definitely. can find a lot of options. So yep. well, can, why don't you talk to us, Maya? I mean, I'm just having such a good time. Why don't you okay. talk to us about what uh, what you do and where we can find you on social media? 
Okay, yeah. Um, so it's interesting. I have my background is, is, in, is in teaching. I'm a former school teacher. Uh, I met my husband and quickly learned about how important his work is. And that's kind of where I found a way how in, in terms of how I can help support his work. And so I learned about the plant-based diet and we said, my goodness, we need to teach this to the patients. And so I started gathering information that the physician's committee for responsible medicine makes available for patients on diabetes and things like that. So I started off with offering support at the vascular center to start in a podcast for individuals who could not attend our in-person events. Um, and like you, uh, Amy, I am a pod leader. My husband is my co-pod leader here in the Dallas area. We go by plant-based DFW. Before the uh, pandemic, pod we also- kind of like a, a, a meetup group, but they, but it's through Plant Pure Communities and you can find them. We'll put links to that too. So if you wanna try to see if there's a pod in your area and if there's not, you can start one up and, and we can help you with that. And it's just a, yeah. a group that you can join that's free and you can meet like-minded people who are in this lifestyle at all different phases. Go ahead, Maya. I just want yeah. to make sure that they yeah. know that way. Thank you. I'm, I, because you know your, your audience better. So yes, I'm glad you're clarifying that. And so that's what we did. We offered lectures, partnered with other people to help educate the community. We offer support that way. Potlucks, food demos, movie screenings. We did all that. Uh, that came to a halt. So we started doing more of that, that stuff online. Uh, the pod has been a great way, the podcast, uh, which goes by Healthy Lifestyle Solutions. That's uh, the podcast that I host. Um, it's another wonderful way for me to be able to offer support for anyone, anywhere. And so I like inviting physicians, dietitians, um, health coaches, people who have stories to share about how this way of living has enhanced their life. And I cover lifestyle medicine uh, along with uh, the power of plant-based foods. So we, we talk about stress management, using exercises, medicine, building healthy relationships. Uh, mental health has become very important to me. Uh, I think we're living in a world where it's a little bit easier to talk about depression. And I, I don't want to get uh, too much into detail, but just things that are affect us because we now know that lifestyle choices can affect our mental health. So my goal is to support my listeners that way. Um, and I like supporting women in health. I support everyone, but I feel like women do so much for our world in terms of raising the children, cooking for the families. Um, right. We have a lot of influence. And we have a lot of influence. That's right. And so I think that if you start with the woman first and support her, she can support her family and help create change. And, and, and also the greatest thing about that is you impact your future generations by teaching them how to eat healthier and um, and taking care of yourself, really. And uh, so the best way to learn about us is just going uh, to our website, plant-based DFW. DFW is for Dallas, Fort Worth, um, dot com. And there you'll learn about my husband and myself, our podcast. We're also members of uh, the organization called Walk with a Doc where we walk with our community um, every month, once a month, and we cover a health topic. And so, yeah, and so just, I wanna throw this out there. I, I've said it before, um, Amy, but next month, we've been invited to be part of the Tulsa Veg Fest. Uh, mm -hmm. That is for, yeah, four hours north of us. And so uh, Riz will be speaking on cardiovascular disease and I'll be uh, doing a food demo for, in Spanish for the bilingual community, so. Uh, lots of things happening, and I'm so excited uh, that we're starting to kind of gather and uh, come yes. back together. Yes, that would be so nice. And, I'm, and it's so wonderful that you're bilingual, so you can reach out into other communities as well, which is very, oh, very yes. helpful. Wow. Well, I want to invite all of you that are listening and watching to tell us in the comments, what are you going to remember from today? What's your takeaway? And this way, people who are browsing around, they can take a look and see what you have to say. And, and please stay tuned for a special announcement. I did want to thank Jess from Jess Has Voice. She did the announcement. She did the promos. And she's done so many things to help promote this broadcast. And Jess Has Voice, who's coming up next? 
At age 72, Esther went from size 26 to size 6. At age 80, Al could hardly walk without debilitating chest pains. Today, he can walk for miles. Join us on Friday, May 13th, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, on Be Green with Amy Live. Well, thank you so much, Maya. It's Thank just been you. so nice to have you here. I just feel like we've known each other for a long time. I don't know why. We just I feel a connection with you. But I want to thank also, and most of all, you, the audience. You're watching and listening and sharing and subscribing. And you're checking out Maya's social media. And you're looking at the Be Green with Amy and, and other plant-based media spreading the word. Because that's what this is about, is trying to help heal the world. Because that's what Maya and and myself, we want to do as well. And I want to invite all of you because I had, a, I had a, well, he was my great uncle and his name was Lou. And he used to talk to me on the phone once in a while. And this is what he would say to me. And I want to say that it's all of you first. Okay. So take, take your right hand and grab your left shoulder and then take your left hand and grab your right shoulder. Now squeeze. That's a hug from me to you. And if you want to type in the comments, my tagline, which is be strong, be well, and be green. And I'm going to ask Maya, she's going to be saying green with me at the end. Are you ready, Maya? Yes. Okay. Well, until I see you guys again, remember, be strong, be well, and be green. green. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye Maya. Now you can listen to Be Green with Amy expert interviews wherever you go. Listen while walking, meal prepping, or traveling. Find Be Green with Amy on Apple, Google, Alexa, Amazon, or virtually anywhere you find podcasts. Be strong, be well, and be green with Be Green with Amy.